Hamilton's overtake. So, over um, 10 yeah over 10 that i've uh, written down from mm -hmm. the text uh trying for instance uh like you and me and all the the guys in the class we were also given talents these are mm. opportunities that, that those are god-given gifts that were given to us maybe mm. you have more than i got but um mm. yeah, but uh, i should use what i have best so mm -hmm. that when the king comes back for the audit i'm ready to give accountability so i don't want to, to speak with my entire preaching right. here but uh, sure. that's what I have yeah. so, so you're just going to be uh, talking about the parable and uh, also the parable of the talents uh, so basically you're sharing from that okay that's good clear um thank you um, and Shubhashish, God has saved us so that our responsibility to, is to save others. Okay. Uh, fine. Uh -huh. Then, um, okay, so we're just going through each of your sermon titles just to understand what it's about. Okay. So, uh, Elisha, is Elisha here today's class? No, I don't see Elisha. Okay. Then, uh, Georgia on stewardship. Uh, interesting titles, Stewarding Your Rebound. So, yeah, I just see it here, uh, Stewarding Your Bounds Back. So let's say because of the pandemic, you lost your zeal or passion for the things of God. You are now in the position to rebound. And with rebounding, you need to manage and maintain it. So, uh, so talking about ways to manage the bounds back. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Okay. Then we have uh, okay, Enoch. Um, so Enoch, uh, I thought I, Enoch, I saw Enoch. Um, yeah. So would you like to share? Um, yeah, so good. Grace is the topic. Yeah. Yeah. Just go ahead. Uh, good morning, everybody. Morning. Yeah. Uh, my topic said. Um, Wasted Grace, mm -hmm. and the title is um, the title is Wasted Life. Right. I I want us to I want to go through so the Bible passage there, um, Second Corinthians chapter six from one and two. Mm -hmm. um, if we go through that, mm -hmm. we will see very well that uh uh please is somebody in the uh, that's bible there i'm trying to prepare for work so i left my bible in the in the sitting room um uh, no worries no worries so uh, that's fine I, we just uh, we're not uh, going in depth so second corinthians 6 uh you said verses 1 and 2 right okay yes so from so from that text uh you'd like to share about uh um yeah so i i see this Okay, so um, so can you just give uh, share some insight on that title, wasted life? So what exactly yes. um, is it? Now, okay. waste yeah. waste is a sinful in every realm. Mm. Waste is a sinful in every realm. The more precious the commodity being wasted, the more sinful the waste. The waste of energy has become more serious because of the energy shortage. Now, any life that is not producing, the reason why it was made is a civil, is a waste life. Many of us mm -hmm. today, many people today have wasted the grace of God upon their lives because they are not doing what God asked them to do. They are not being in work of God. God that deposit there is no life that God has not deposited something in to make the kingdom to grow or to expand the kingdom. But because of the worldly things, because of love of the pleasure, that grace has been wasted. And uh, like I said, if grace of God upon a man's life is wasted, the life of that fellow is wasted. It mm. can be accountable to it. So right. we should all know that the grace god has given us grace and we should also walk towards that grace thank you wow nice wonderful so it's a ins inspirational motivational message 
uh, about turning back from wasting our lives and so i guess it's also about purpose and pursuing our purpose and so on okay uh, thank you thank you um let's see who else is next so anita is uh, aradhana saying about persecution okay so aradhana you can also uh, enter it on the google sheet please um about the topic and the title so i don't know whether i guess persecution is the topic and uh, whatever title that you decide you can put that in the google sheet as well both the topic and the title right okay so uh, next we have zalitoli ministering deliverance how to cast off demons like jesus okay so um, yeah i mean it's it's pretty straightforward but yeah just go ahead and uh, share with us a little bit, um what exactly you want you'd like to address in your message um, basically i just want to talk about the biblical approach how to cast out demons like uh, what i've um, seen over the years in 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 my study is that you know there are so many are uh, wrong traditions wrong belief regarding casting out demons like uh, like some you see some tricks or some superstitious belief mm. so but just basing on the word of god how to cast out demons just like jesus yeah in that way okay. i'm going to talk about it right right okay so uh, again i just wanted to remind you about the time factor here i want to be mindful of that because there is a lot we can share about deliverance and uh, you know about uh, uh, i mean the, the reasons of uh, you know the degrees of you know demonization and, and all that so uh, you just need to really uh, think about if there's a lot of content of course you know you just need to think about uh, what can i share what can i not share and what will be helpful you know in 10 minutes right so you could just work on that uh, great Uh, so rosalyn uh, is about uh, fear and how perfect love casts out fear is rosalyn there um, yeah rosalyn you would like to say a few words about um, the direction in which um, so. um i'm sorry we're not able to hear you Pastor Noor. Yeah, it's very clear. Yes, yeah. Please go ahead. Mm. Sorry, Pastor. I'll be sharing from First John four eighteen. Hmm. Um. We all, at some given point, we uh, battle with this fear thing. Um. There is a sudden fear, inbuilt fear. So. Yeah. working on it and um, i'll be sharing it from first john 418 how god's love mm -hmm. how we can be dependent on god's love not uh, you know when it's not like how how much we love god but uh, the the confidence uh, in knowing how much god loves us right um that will help us to battle with mm -hmm. our fears uh, it can be inbuilt or it can be sudden fear like in you know, a sudden um or, or anything like um and um, then we can like david we can like boldly say like though i walk through the valleys of death mm -hmm. i will fear no evil mm -hmm. so okay so how to deal with fear uh, whether it's uh, unrealistic or even you know um it's a reasonable you know uh, it's got its reason so um so how to deal with fear and uh, and then this scripture this text is from where you'll be sharing okay understood yeah okay thank, thank you. you right right so uh, then jefina um you are unique you are unique um the okay the process his will good future can you just explain that is a, a special purpose i guess you're talking about god's purpose so but i just wanted to know what aspect of it and yeah go ahead uh, jafina 
Yes, Pastor. So there's a verse in Second Timothy uh, where it talks about uh, uh, in a large house there is also gold and silver. In Second Timothy chapter two, verse, tw uh, verse twenty. Uh, okay. So sometimes we use the golden vessels and sometimes we use the wood vessels, but everything is used for the master's use. So I just want to explain it on like how we are, uh, no matter where we are, we are here to follow the purpose that God has given for us. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just about his will. And in the end it says, uh, prepare to do any good work. So there is a preparation, there is a process that we need to go through. And yeah, that's what I want to explain. Okay, fine, fine. Mm -hmm. So it's Second Timothy, right? Okay, I think. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, I saw. Okay, okay. Here it's chapter uh, two, verse twenty. Second Timothy. Right, right. Okay, I'll just change it here. Here it says First oh. Timothy. So I'll just change it on the sheet. Okay, okay, got that. Okay, so Anita is about being salt and light in the world, and the title is the only way to live. So I guess it's about um, is Anita here. Yeah, Anita, could you go ahead and share? Ah, uh, yeah, yes, Pastor. It's about how to live a life of being salt and light to this world and how to influence other people around you. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, so how to do that? So so I guess, uh, will you be also talking about different scenarios? Like if you're uh, you know, in this kind of environment, how to do that? Or will it be a general um, thing, irrespective of whatever environment you are in? And these are some things that you can do to influence. Anyway, think about it. Um, yeah, you can work on that. Okay, wonderful. So, um, um, yeah, so the bigger you can actually uh, put in your, you know, uh, enter it in the Google Sheet, that will be helpful. So we know, uh, and also Aradhana, you know, you can enter it there, please. Um, so you have 10 minutes, just think about that. And also one more thing that I wanted to um, yeah, share was that you can also, um, you know, to help uh, things to be clearer, you can also pr uh, prepare a PowerPoint presentation yeah, as part of the presentation, a PowerPoint. I think that will be helpful um, you know, uh, to to be, uh, you know, precise and succinct because it's 10 minutes. Uh, but I leave it to you. I think the PowerPoint presentation would be great if you can prepare that as well, right? Okay. That's good. Okay, so let's uh, let's pick up from where we stopped last uh, session. Uh, so we were looking at uh, this whole aspect of constructing a sermon and uh, putting together an outline. And we were looking at different aspects of it. We started by looking at the title. We started, and then we moved on to um, you know the uh, uh, introduction, how it should be, and. Uh, and also then we looked at the proposition, the statement, and which is a big idea. And, and you know, in a way, what you all shared today is really the, the big idea. You know, if you actually think through and if you want to, you know, uh, you can refine that in one statement. Okay, this is what, you know, this, this the next 10 minutes are going to be. You know? So uh, you can actually work on that. Um, and then we looked at, um, uh, the transition statement, and then we looked at, you know, how the sermon sermon can have the main points and the sub points. So I guess you know, um, uh, okay, the question when to present again? It will be uh, much later. It will be end of the term, uh, Rosalind. Like it will be in, um, I guess it will be in November. Yeah, so we are in September. Oh, one more month to go, and then it will be in November, right? So um, I'll I'll. Put, put up the dates so we know you know there are about now 10 12 so it'll be about 10 people presenting every class yeah so we'll I'll, I'll put up the date right um okay so outline of the sermon we looked at that we looked at all yeah i think this is where we stop we were looking at illustrations right so when we're looking at the points or main points uh, given the 10 minutes uh, so you choose, you know, how many points should it have? Uh, what are those main? And, they, and these, when you have these main divisions, it helps, right? It helps, um, you know, uh, it helps to um, kind of demarcate, okay, 
that this is one line of thought, this is one point, and we are now moving on to the next point, and it's all leading to the, the main topic, um, and it will really uh, help the listener to, to understand, it help in a, in a logical manner, right? Um, um, yeah, sorry, I just see this question. Isaac, uh, how to do PowerPoint presentation? Can I use another method like Google Docs? Um, well, actually, uh, it's very simple. You can, I mean, it's uh, you can learn in a couple of days, actually, PowerPoint, and you can convert it into a, you know, a PDF. You can save it as a PDF. That's what I do, even for the marriage and family. It's a PowerPoint, which is saved as a as a PDF, just like your notes. And uh, each page is actually a screen. So um, you can, I mean, if you, you have time, right, from now till November. So you think, you think about it. Uh, you can use Google Docs, but I feel that this will be much better. Um, if you are Goog using Google Docs also, uh, you can actually convert it into a PDF. That will be better. Right. So whatever works for you. And uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, you don't have to use a PowerPoint. Uh, like I use something which is converted into a PDF, so that's that's always uh, you know it's 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 useful. It's user friendly actually when you're sharing the screen. So you can you can also do the same thing, Isaac. Yeah. Okay. So um, so while we uh, we were looking at illustrations and how illustrations help um, you know help bring that point clearly, how uh, explain the point what we are stating, the truth that we are explaining, and how illustrations actually help um, help clarify those things, right? Um, and uh, just like how the Lord used parables, uh, it, it is a wonderful way of um, communicating a very uh, important spiritual truth. And the Lord, you know, there's so many parables um, which you may have be learning in um, the ministry of the evangelist, pastor, and teacher, right? Um, and so many parables on so many different uh, topics um, the about finances about the kingdom about uh, you know the uh, what, what we looked at the lost um, and so on so uh, these really help okay um, so i think we stopped at uh, we've been looking at parables if you're following in the notes and we looked at uh, some of these points which are helpful uh, guidelines for illustrations. Um, so don't uh, some of these don'ts. You know, uh, don't use an illustration just because it is good and it is your favorite illustration. Right? It will illustrate your point. You know, just because it is a good story, that just because it's uh, maybe a humorous anecdote, um, don't consider using it unless it actually has a connection to the truth that is being shared. Right, so that that was one thing that we I think that was the last thing that we saw. So continuing on, you know, um, there are several. Uh, uh, yeah, we also saw that some illustrations may not be appropriate to some places, some audiences. So be discriminating and discerning. Um, yeah, there are several sources of illustrations. Okay, so our our own life testimony, our own the the instances that have happened in our lives you know that's uh, that's a good place uh, and that will be very very authentic in uh, you know very real because that's happened in your life you, know, you can say okay this is what happened uh, and uh, uh, this is something that is happening and this is how god dealt, dealt with me etc you, you could share that uh, but also you know, we need to be mindful that this is how God dealt with you for this particular situation. And uh, this may not be, you know, true for the other person. Or it may not, you know, God may deal in a totally different way, right, um, for the other person. So it'll be, it'll be helpful if you can mention that as well. Okay. So you might say, okay, it took me six years to come out of this particular stronghold. Okay, 
so in six for six years i struggled for six years you know i i did all this uh, you know i i put the word i confessed the word declared the word and and so on and it, it took me this this much of time to come out of it it took me six months uh, and god restored me now this may not be the same case there may be other factors involved you know in these six years right maybe uh, you know you went back there was a backsliding involved there are other factors which are you know are there which may not be the case for the other person right so um so it'll be good even when we're sharing testimonies maybe we're sharing testimonies of other people right how god dealt with them how they uh, you know they uh, encountered god and encountered the truth etc so you could just you know mention that okay this is what happened and the the important thing the truth is that god the way god intervened okay and and that's the thing um well the actual thing of the time frame and the process it could vary because it could vary based on the response my response to god it could vary based on different other factors so um so you could just mention that when we are talking about or mentioning testimonies right our testimony testimonies of others as well well testimonies are very very um uh, very exciting to hear they build up person's faith and so on uh, but it'll be good to be discerning and say okay um you know well god would deal with your life deal in your life um the details may not be the same the process may not be the same right it will it'll be helpful for the for the listener to know that to understand that okay do not repeat the same illustration uh, before the same audience well you know that happens right when you're uh, if you're ministering in a church uh, and sunday after sunday Uh, you are ministering and so if you are using the same illustration they switch off people switch off oh i've heard this so many times why is pastor you know mentioning the same thing why is he bringing up the same thing and so it uh, gets people disinterested and does the opposite of what the illustration is supposed to do right so they've heard the story so many times and and uh, while it's powerful and while it's true and uh, uh, it's all that but uh, the because of the fact that it has been repeated over and over again uh, people's attention starts to fall right so uh, do not repeat for the you know um, uh, the illustration maybe use something else or don't use illustration at all for that particular thing right for, for that particular point that you want to drive home okay uh, try to collect and write down or file illustrations for property review that's a that's a good, good practice if it can be you know if you can if you're working on a laptop you know just open a folder maybe on different topics you want illustrations you've got illustrations um you share that you know you uh, maybe about your own life maybe about something that you heard maybe about some testimony um that you heard you know you can always uh, keep a inventory of that and uh, or file that and it will be very very useful it will come in very handy um here you know uh, again uh, ap gibbs uh, quotes uh, henry ward beecher seven fold purpose of illustration okay what are they they help assist the argument that you are presenting they help the hearer to remember definitely they stimulate the imagination so when you're sharing a story you know people are not uh, just focusing on the words and if you're actually explaining and and narrating that incident um people are able to actually visualize they they place themselves in that situation you know i very vividly remember uh where you know this always comes back to my mind you know this was in class uh i think it was in yeah standard 1 you know first grade um just out of kindergarten and first grade and i remember this history teacher uh, it was an evening you know it was the last class before we school ended for that day and the history teacher you know he, he was actually talking about uh, hindu mythology right and uh, she was narrating a story from there and the first time i'm hearing that story and um, and she was she was so good she was uh, talking about certain you know uh, the details of it and the entire story 
of uh, uh, of that and and you know of a whole class uh, all of us youngsters you know children uh, so we could we were just immersed in that story you know we could just imagine everything happening just before our eyes yeah, as if it was you know uh, it was in virtual reality we were just there watching everything happen and 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 that stayed with me for years even today right so so a good story uh, uh, a good illustration it stimulates the imagination right so the they're able to picture visualize and so it becomes the truth becomes so real so part of their lives right um, the illustration also helps in resting the audience right so maybe you're dealing with some difficult concepts maybe you're dealing or sharing some you know difficult things for the mind to comprehend for the mind to relate to comprehend understand right and uh, and you're sh sharing these concepts so an illustration helps rest yeah. so here's a story which is actually drawing and relating to the truth and you're not just describing the abstract things about the truth anymore but here's a life you know instance you here's a story here's an instance here's the testimony and it helps the mind to rest and to just you know absorb the story and at the end of the story you know all these connections are made to the truth are the concepts that you were you had shared a little earlier okay um and they provide for various classes of hearers that that's the best thing um you know it, it could be uh, uh you know uh, different class different category in terms of demographic in terms of uh, you know in terms of age in terms of uh, their upbringing their backgrounds whatever you know the illustration helps the appropriate illustration helps okay and and also this is a this is a, the sixth one is a very important one they help bridge the difficult places right so there are some difficult things that you are sharing and an illustration helps as a bridge um from um from something to uh, from a concept to really understanding it right? it helps bridge that um so it helps bridge the difficult places and also enforces the truth okay so uh, illustration very important um very useful at the same time if we are using illustration after illustration after illustration you know it takes our it actually steals our time okay so we need to be mindful of that right? because an illustration you know you, it takes time right you cannot just state certain things and just move away an illustration you know you can state the truth you can state the facts you can make statements of truth but an illustration is you're going into some detail maybe it's about a person's life maybe about it's about an instance uh, incident that happened you know like for example um, you know when i was sharing about or oh, uh, about that sunday morning experience or sunday afternoon experience you know post church going to the place uh, going to the restaurant or trying to figure out which restaurant. now i cannot rush that i had to take time to talk about okay what each one could have been thinking what each one was feeling and what uh, you know what are disappointed I, we it does take time to talk about it right so just imagine for each and every point being made if there are illustrations it's going to be it's going to take some time okay and you need to be mindful right? if you're going to be just using illustration after illustration right? and there are certain places where you don't have to like you don't have to be under pressure to use an illustration and because we have learned that okay an illustration helps in these places it rests the mind it helps bridge it helps reinforce the truth and so on so you you can choose okay maybe this is a you know here's a different yeah here's a good place to use an illustration right here's a thing i just sense that the spirit of god is uh, you know just emphasizing this truth for this audience you know, it's just emphasizing maybe there's a need there for this audience for this particular for this particular truth for this sunday or for this meeting you know this truth really needs to be emphasized here emphasized here i just feel it in my spirit that that god is you know just a weight of god's presence on this so 
um, yeah, let me just use an illustration so, and, and the Holy Spirit will just eliminate that illustration as well, right? And uh, grab people's attention to the truth that is being shared. Okay, so, um, so the main job for us as communicators of the truth is, of course, to communicate the text, the main message, don't be distracted away from it, to just talk about stories and end with stories. Right, um, so um, so don't get distracted halfway and go somewhere and don't find your way back, you know, to the outline. Sometimes preachers do that, right? Just go and then oh, uh, they never come back to the main flow of the message, and that's just end somewhere. So um, you know, don't do that. Okay, so let's look at the next part of it, next aspect of uh, the, the sermon outline, which is the application. Okay, so application is the process by which the uh, the truth of what was proclaimed, okay, the truth that you shared, um, is it it becomes relevant in a person's life. Okay, why why should it become relevant? So here's an opportunity for the person to apply the truth. Okay, so this is here's how. I can apply the truth of the gifts of the Spirit. Here's how I can apply the truth of what I heard about what I learned about faith. Here's how I can apply the truth of what I learned about, like some one of you shared, you know, about being salt and light. Okay, the Lord has called me to be salt and light, but here's how I can apply this truth in my own life. Okay, so the application is about putting to use, it's about walking it out, is about working uh, it out in my life. Okay. So it's so it becomes very, very relevant. You know? Like somebody said, okay, I hear, I forget. Okay, I see, I remember. I do, and it stays. Right? I do, and it stays with me forever. So this is the doing part, not just the hearing part. So James talks about, James 1 talks about how we should not be a forgetful hearer, but the doer of the work, doer of the word of God. Right? So uh, here's an opportunity for the hearer to actually do it. Right? Okay, so let's look, let's look at uh, um, something uh, about application. Okay? So application is to make the text alive in contemporary life. So, in, so this is the truth is eternal. Now, truth is, you know, you go through different seasons. You know, maybe the truth was uh, uh, of what we what is being uh, shared here. Um, you know, the uh, the the life of that time, the culture of that time, and uh, uh, the the challenges of that time. You know, there could be some things in common, uh, and it could be very very different as well. Right? But since truth transcends time and culture and all that, you know, here we are today um, uh, uh, in, in modern time, you know, looking at this eternal truth, right? So while we consider the eternal truth and uh, it makes this whole text of this truth or this truth come alive, even in my life situation uh, in, in today's time, and with all this technology in today's time, with all these new challenges, this truth holds good, right? And the way I apply it, I get to experience the reality of it. How I get to experience the power of putting that truth to practice, right? So, um, in relating the sermon to basic human problems, basic human needs, human challenges, um, then you know I'm able to apply. Okay, so uh, so these are some principles that we are looking at. Okay, so uh, while we are considering stating some applications or uh, methods of applying the truth, here are some things that uh, to consider. Right. So when I relate the sermon to basic human challenges, okay, these are the challenges of today. You know, we could be talking about, you know, maybe. 15, 20 years ago, or maybe 30 years ago, we would not have been talking about uh, social media, right? The way, the form it, it is in today, or we won't be talking about, uh, you know, 
when it comes to parenting, we won't be talking about you know limiting screen time to children or making screen screen time the exposure you know to all this digital screen and uh, pictures and movies and everything um making it non-existent right till they are or not you know uh, not allowing access to that till they are of a certain age right well it seems like okay i can just put that and they'll be fine uh, you know they'll be glued to the screen while i do my stuff but but doctors actually say that it is very harmful for them you know at that age to be looking at just moving images uh, without processing things you know so it's it's not really good for them so so they say screen time should be very limited in growing children right so so things like that so technology has changed but um, the fact is that okay uh, by relating the truth to the problems of today okay 30 years back we would not have related that but now you know we 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 need to relate to what are the challenges, what are the problems uh, of today. So when we do that, now that's that's uh, the way of making that truth relevant so that I can apply it, right? Okay, uh, determine what is normal for today, you know, what is, uh, what is the ground reality, which means that I need to understand what is happening, what is happening in society, what is, uh, what is the problem of, you know, by and large, right? Uh, specifics will differ but by and large what is the problem of you know a, a person of this particular age what are the challenges that they are going through uh, you know if it's a senior person you know what is it that they are going through yes you know they maybe they are in their 70s or 80s or you know uh, older and uh, certain things they are you know unable to do right the maybe the lack of mobility or mobility is reduced uh, maybe the strength is reduced maybe you know, technology around them has changed so much and they're not able to relate to it, right? Making making us payment for a certain bill, you know, now um, technology requires that you know certain things about email and using your phones to make payment and maybe they're not, you, those are some challenges, right? So, um, so it helps for us to know that Right, so determine what is normal for today's society. Know what is happening. Know what is, uh, you know, happening in today's uh, society. Right, it helps us to uh, bring the truth and enable the person to apply the truth uh, in their lives. Right. Okay. Make the uh, application specific or definite, uh, because that is when you can you can take that step. Okay. Because, because if it's unclear, then the step to be taken is also unclear. And uh, if it's not clear, I will not take that step. Right? If it's left unclear, if it's left uh, indecisive, then uh, how can I apply it? How can I take that step? Right? How can I follow that instruction? But if it is clear, for example, you know, when it comes to prayer, like we're studying about prayer and then you look at um, the life of Daniel and you see that, uh, okay, Daniel had a specific time and a specific place when he prayed. Every day he would open the windows, uh, that place, a specific place, specific time, scripture talks about that. He would face Jerusalem, he would pray. Okay. So that principle, okay, we can apply it. Okay, specific time, specific place. So what is your time? Is it 6 a.m. in the morning? Is it 11.30 p.m.? Do you have a specific place for it, right? Or do you just leave it to wherever, whenever? It's not going to happen. So um, do you have a specific place? You know, Can you find a specific place? Can you arrive at a specific place? And can you arrive at a specific time and say every day, this time, um, nothing much happens, so I'm going to dedicate that to prayer. Um, so things like that, if we would give, if we would, you know, um, as a principle, allow the person to think and say, okay, what are some specifics here? Right? Then the step taken will also be specific and definitive, where the person says, okay, I need to find a specific time and specific place. Okay, done. This is what it is. So now I can apply the truth 
in that specific time and specific place i can enter into prayer i can spend this time uh, in prayer and uh, and uh, you know have a consistent uh, prayer life right so these would be ways by which uh, some principles of um, you know application okay um yeah i think that's all we have time for today okay so um, next class we will on, on thursday we will look at uh, the time for the application and then we look at conclusion uh, and so on and then we'll move into the presentation part of it right okay so we'll stop here thank you so much god bless bye